Hey everyone, my name is Peter. I'm from the Netherlands and I've been trading with Trading World somewhere around six to seven years already. It started out with a friend of mine who was working in finance and he started writing the algorithms and I started building the bots for them. My latest trading bot was built on top of Luna and of course then the crash happened and I was like, no, I don't want my money anywhere where I can't control it directly anymore. So after the Luna crash, I took all my money out of all of the things that I cannot control directly. Liquidity funds and exchanges, mostly those kind of things. And that is how I stumbled upon Hummingbot quite much by accident, really. As time went on, I started building more and more advanced stuff for Hummingbot, pretty much focusing on my own strategies, which also came with my own needs regarding the environment, which is what this video will be about. It's going to be about Hummingbot advanced Docker and how it came to be. Advanced Hummingbot Docker can be downloaded on GitHub. I will put a link in the description below. So I've been building a lot on top of Hummingbot and I'm doing this on NixOS, which is quite a peculiar operating system where it's also quite hard to set up your own development environment. This is pretty much why I built my own Docker image because unlike Hummingbot's Docker image, this one is specifically meant for development, but can also be used for production, which you will see in a bit. This allows me to keep a fresh containerized development environment with everything I need, custom dependencies, testing out things directly from the source code, which means I can make changes, I can send a pull request, I can pull the latest changes if I want to, and I can also directly work on my own strategies. Aside from the development use case, there's also another use case that you can do. For instance, you can run other things unrelated to Hummingbot directly next to your bots. For instance, I have my own Discord bot that sends hourly reports. And as you can see, I called it Modern Dragon Horde, which was an ironic reference to hoarding crypto, which is more modern than old fashioned gold and diamonds and stuff. So yeah, that was another use case could be running your own database right next to the bots, for instance, PostgreSQL and have multiple bots connect to that. We're going to take a look at just that based on the tutorial by Federico, which uses the Hummingbot official Docker image. I'm not going to explain everything in full. If you want to replicate this, you can watch this video, which I will put a link in the description below. And then you just have to follow my lead and do the differences versus this tutorial. So let's get started. Every Hummingbot advanced Docker project starts the same way. You clone the Hummingbot project directly in the repo. So as you can see, I already have it here set up. The source of this folder could be git clone, but you can also go to the Hummingbot GitHub and extract the folder directly from the zip file, should you want to. Once you have done that, it's time to install the PostgreSQL dependency. For Hummingbot Advanced Docker, we have a very interesting way of doing this, which is the uninstall hooks. Uninstall hooks is a way to install custom dependencies not directly related to Hummingbot, directly into Hummingbot's environment. There is two ways to do this. You have dep install and you have global install. The main difference between dep install and global install is that global install will retain its full structure, even in production. So this one is very nice for native dependencies like my Discord bot. And dep install also installs directly in the Hummingbot environment, but only keeps the Python environment. So if you use any kind of dependencies to build your Python packages like Rust or C++ or whatnot, it will not be included in the final image, which is pretty nice because it keeps your image small and clean because you only need the Python package. So if you need a Python package alone, dep install is the best way to do this. Of course, you can mix dep install and global install as you like. As you can see, we have used dep install to install the PostgreSQL binary driver without having to change the Docker files. Another interesting thing you can see is that the hooks are fully ignored by the repo. This means that you can freely override the Hummingbot advanced Docker source code without having to override your own source code that you have updated. After you have done this, it's time to make our development environment. As you can see, we have an example which only contains the Hummingbot Docker specification. We copy this example to our own environment, as you can see right here, and we add two other bots to it. DB, which is our PostgreSQL database, pgAdmin, which is the admin panel where we can see things actually happening. And we add a secret, and this secret is really just the password. The password, by the way, is just test, as you can see right here. Now it's time to bring up our development environment. And as you can see, we use this command to execute it and run the environment. After you have done this, the Hummingbot development environment will start to do some post installation. This should be done in a bit. And once it's done, you can actually go into your environment. 
Now we are in the environment and let's run the bot. We enter our password. Of course, if you have done this for the first time, then you have to set up a new password, but that will be really easy to do. It's basically the same as the original humming bot. And now we're inside and we start to make a demo strategy. I have already made one, so I'm just starting my own, which is just a paper trading liquidity mining. And once you've imported it, you can start it and it will be running. When we have started the strategy inside this folder, we have this file and we have to add our PostgreSQL credentials here. Once you have done that, you can restart your strategy and the PostgreSQL should be running. Let's take a look if that's actually true. Here we have our tables, and as you can see, Hummingbot is connecting to them and is actually creating them and using them. Now we have gone over three of the use cases that are nice with this Docker image. Custom bots, a database, and a development environment. Another use case, which also makes this Docker image very special, is that you can take all of your configurations and put them into production. You can create two different files, one for x86 and one for ARM64, which is very useful, for instance, for Raspberry Pi, or in my case, the Odroid M1, which is running three humming bots 24 seven. I will show you how to build this production image, and then we will log in into my server to show it in real time. Once you're happy with your development environment, you want to bring it to production. For instance, after having tested your source code or your strategies, you simply execute the command bash build production image. Unlike with development, where you have to use the example spec to create your own, with production you don't really need to do this. The example is simply there to be put on wherever you're going to run this as production on. So this is more like a reference. Let us run the command and see what happens. As you can see, it starts building. I'm not going to record the full build because it takes quite a while, but this is the only command you really need to run. However, there's one thing I really want to show you guys. Suppose you build the ARM64 image and you get the following error, like here, sh no such file or directory. It means that you don't have an emulator set up in order to run ARM64 executables. To fix this, run the following command. I'll make sure to put this command in the description below so you don't have to type it over. What this command does is installing emulators inside the Docker environment so it can run ARM64 as well as other architectures directly. Now let us build again and see what happens. As you can see, now it starts actually building for ARM64. Now that you know how to run your own Docker image as well as building for production, let's take a look at how it's running on my end. As you can see, I run three bots, all of them running from the same image, but they are out of starting their own configuration. Configuration 4, 3 and 2. I have this logging parameter in it to make sure that Docker won't spam the log files. There's a fourth image running, which is the Emerald Fund Discord bot, which is the one that shows the hourly reports. This also shows the power of running this stuff in production because you can run things next to it that are not directly related to Hummingbot. And at the same time, if you need something in Hummingbot, you can directly install it using the install hoops. Well, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoy. Maybe we can talk a bit in the Hummingbot Discord server. I wish you all a very pleasant day. Bye for now.